Since the pandemic began, consumers are creating more meals at home and they're looking for new food options for breakfast, lunch and dinner. As well, they're keen to try meal kits and new takeaway options that will make it easier for them to feed their families. Today we're putting the spotlight on sunflower oil and I'm going to show you a number of ways that sunflower oil can be used to create a variety of breakfast, lunch and dinner foods. With so many consumers looking for plant-based foods and free from food options, I'm going to start today's demo by making some gluten and dairy-free pancakes and then top them off with an eggless maple meringue. So we're going to start making our gluten-free pancakes. We're going to start off with uh, rolled oats going into a Vitamix and I'm going to break it down a little, uh, a little into smaller pieces. It's going to blend it for about 10 seconds. Perfect. So now super easy recipe. All the ingredients go in. We blend it again and it's ready. Cinnamon goes in, the rice flour, the uh, baking powder goes in. Now we're going to add in our uh, ripe banana, our diced apples, the vanilla essence, and then sunflower oil goes in, and then the coconut milk. So it's a dairy-free, gluten-free. Now we're going to blend the mix until it's smooth. And that's it. The mix is ready. Super easy, very quick. I'm going to pour this into a bowl. And then we're just going to let it sit for about five minutes just to allow the rice flour to uh, hydrate for the mix to thicken up just slightly before we, uh, before we cook the mix. So we could put maple syrup on the pancakes, but why don't we make a maple meringue? So I have 125 mils of water, 125 mils of maple syrup, putting it into a mixing bowl with a whip, and then I'm going to add a modified soy protein called Versa Whip, and then we're going to start whipping it for seven minutes. And our seven minutes are up. And the maple meringue is ready. And we started off with uh, one cup of liquid and you can see how much it's grown. Unbelievable. Okay, I have a piping bag here. You could just spoon the meringue right onto the pancakes, but I'm going to put some of the meringue into a piping bag to go over the pancakes. Extremely light and fluffy. Okay, that's going to be enough for our pancakes. Okay, so let's start cooking our pancakes. So I've got my uh, my pan nice and hot. I'm going to use a little bit of sunflower oil, just a really light amount onto the surface, and I'm going to drop four nice portions. Flatten it out slightly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cook it until we have some bubbles appear through the center and the top tends to dry out slightly before we turn them over. So it'll be about two minutes. So now we have some bubbles that have appeared. The surface is almost dry. So we're going to turn over our pancakes and they look absolutely delicious. Perfectly golden brown. Cook it for another minute and then we're going to plate it. So our pancakes are ready. Let's plate these pancakes and then I'm going to top them off with the maple meringue. Boy, does that ever look delicious. And then just a nice sprig of mint on top just to decorate it, a little few slices of apple, 
and there's our dairy-free pancakes. Let's move on now to the creation of a vinaigrette that is ideal for green salads as well as grain and protein bowls, which are very popular nowadays. Today I'm going to be making a salad with tomato, cucumber, and ciabatta croutons. I'm going to finish it off by adding some pan-seared halloumi cheese. So we're going to start this recipe by grilling the halloumi. And I'm going to start by just putting a little bit of sunflower oil onto the pan. And I'm going to do two pieces of halloumi. So we're going to start making the vinaigrette. I'm going to start with some Dijon mustard, some garlic, a little bit of salt, uh, black pepper, and white balsamic vinegar. And the reason I'm using a white balsamic vinegar is the beautiful colors of the tomatoes, the cucumber. I don't want to put a dark balsamic vinegar into it to cover those beautiful flavors. Now I'm going to start adding the sunflower oil. What's really nice about the sunflower oil is it has such a neutral flavor, so it's perfect for vinaigrettes, sauces and marinades, because it allows all the flavors to come through due to it being such a neutral flavor. And there's our vinaigrette finished. So let's flip the halloumi cheese. That looks fantastic. Now I'm going to finish the salad. So I've got beautiful cucumbers, yellow tomatoes, red tomatoes. I'm going to add in some toasted chia butter croutons, some torn basil, and now I'm going to put the white balsamic vinaigrette on top of the salad and then toss it all together. Such a perfect time of year with all the tomatoes just coming through now. Okay, so that is ready. Bring my plate over. I'm going to do a nice portion of the salad. My halloumi cheese is almost ready. There, let's put that on top. Those two lovely pieces of grilled halloumi cheese. And what's nice about the sunflower oil is it has a high heat point, so it's perfect for like grilling and sauteing. And now we're just going to finish it off with a little sprig of some fresh basil. And there we have our grilled halloumi. For the final recipe, I'm going to be making a delicious meatless dinner, combining a number of flavors that consumers are currently craving. I'm going to be making fried hush puppies on a bed of sauteed kale in a drizzle of chilled tahini sauce. For this recipe, we're going to be using sunflower oil as an ingredient and for deep frying. So let's start with the hush puppy mix. I've got my cornmeal flour here. I'm going to put in some all-purpose flour, baking powder. Now I have my two liquids. I have my milk and my beaten egg. So I'm going to put those two together. A little bit of a mix. I've got chopped red onion. I'm going to put that in. Now I'm going to pour my liquids on top of the dry mix and just whisk gently to incorporate all the ingredients. And we want to mix it until we have a nice smooth batter. And you want to leave it for a couple of minutes just to give it a chance for the flour to absorb the liquids and get the batter a little bit thicker before we put it into the oil. So that's the batter ready. We're just going to wait for that to absorb for a couple of minutes. So now we're going to make the chilled tahini sauce that's going to get drizzled over the hush puppies. Starting off with the sesame tahini. 
going to put in a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic and I'll whisk that in and now I'm going to start whisking in the liquids which is the lemon juice to start with. So I've just whisked in the lemon juice and now I'm going to add the water. And using the whisk, just gradually work the water in to the tahini and the lemon juice with the garlic and the salt. Just gradually whisking it in until it becomes a nice smooth sauce. And you want to keep that refrigerated until you need it. There, and that's ready. So now I'm going to saute off the kale, putting in some sunflower oil and then some garlic. Going to saute off the garlic just a little. Now I'm going to add the kale to the fry pan. And now I'm going to put on the lid and let it, let it steam for a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn off the heat. And that'll be ready in a couple of minutes. So now let's fry off the hush puppies. I'm going to make sure my sunflower oil is up to temperature. I want uh, 175 degrees Celsius. And sunflower oil is perfect for deep frying. It has a high heat point of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it doesn't smoke up the kitchen like some other oils. OK, we're up to temperature. I'm going to turn down the heat and I'm going to use an ice cream scoop to, uh, to form the hush puppies. I'm going to drop that into the oil and I also have um, a little wire lifter here that I'm going to use to move the hush puppies around so they don't get cooked just on, you know, on one side. As you can see, they're, uh, they're floating in the oil. And uh, for deep frying for industrial purposes, using sunflower oil, what you'll find, you won't have to change the oil as often as you would with, with other kinds of oils. It has a longer shelf life. So the hush puppies are floating. It's going to make sure that they're moved around and cooking evenly. They're going to take about two minutes to cook. So while they're cooking, I'm going to check over here on my kale and that is wilting very nicely. That's almost ready. That's perfect. So now our hush puppies are ready. They're nice and golden. Beautiful. Another thing about sunflower oil, it doesn't absorb into fried foods like other oils. Um, there we go. I'm going to put it onto some absorbent paper there. Move it over here closer to my plate. And now I'm going to finish off the plate. I'm going to take my sauteed or wilted kale. Put that on the plate. Now some wonderful light and fluffy hush puppies. And finish off, we're going to put on the chilled tahini sauce and before I'm finished plating I'm going to take some nice thin sliced red onion to go over the top and there's the hush puppies deep fried in the sunflower oil and then we have our sauteed kale and sunflower oil, some garlic, a little bit of salt and our chilled tahini sauce.